Hi guys, Joe from Survive the Wild US here. Um, I was I wanted to do a video on um, insulation, uh, just insulation before I go to um, clothes or anything else. I'm still going to do more on gear, um, and then I'm going to do one pretty much just on clothes, which is part of your gear if you're traveling light. Um, so, anyways, I want to start with what insulation is. Well, I got two sheets here. Plastic, but you see a piece of this piece of plastic, and imagine there's zero degrees on this side, zero degree temperature on this side, and a hundred degree temperature on this side. Well, if my skin's right up against here, first of all, uh, heat moves faster through a solid, just like sound does. Um, insulation comes down to airspace. But, <clears throat> first of all, if I put my hand in the air, okay, and it's still, there's no wind, then there's going to be a certain temperature out here, the temperature of my hand, and there's going to be a thin layer here where the temperatures mix. My hand is probably going to warm the air around it. Um, if the, if the, I'm, I'm thinking it's not, you know, 98.6, you know, degrees in here. So, my hand is generating a little bit of heat, and that's key. The human body generates heat. Clothes do not generate heat. Clothes keep it in. You can take a pile of clothes this big, put them in the middle of the woods, and I guarantee you they're not going to be any warmer than the air around them. It is only your body, your body as a human being, because of the energy that's inside of it, that it's burning and putting off heat. That's fundamental because you have to learn how to insulate that heat in from the outside. So, knowing that it's only you is, is key to begin with. Um, so anyways, try to do this quickly. Insulation comes down to airspace. If your skin's right up against here, this is going to be cooled and it's going to move through and traverse to your skin almost almost immediately. Um, now, so say like a single ply window, you know, it's going to feel like it almost has a cold breeze coming off of it. That's because it does. There's actually the, the cold that's coming through, um, the air on this side, right up against that glass, is actually almost as cold as the air outside of it, and it's going to push out. So it's going to feel like there's a cold breeze coming off of it because it's transferred. Um, so then you got like a double ply window. Okay. Now, anything that insulates is on the same premise as this. It's the same as a house. You have a waterproof, windproof barrier. Then you have an airspace filled with insulation. And then you have an, another one. Um, and the more that you add layers, the better. Um, it has to be windproof. The reason is, um, wind chill has a huge factor. Because if the air out here is still and it's cold, okay, it's doing damage. That's fine. But, remember, from this side, the heat is also trying to counteract out here and warm the area around it. But when wind comes by, you're constantly getting a refreshed source of cold air. In other words, it never gets to balance out on this side. So, it's got to be windproof, um, first of all. And then, um, and then you need the, the airspace in between, so that, well, <coughs> then the air on this side has to cool down enough to traverse all the way through to here and then this space is going to be a certain temperature too so what you have is I guess if you have zero degrees out here and a hundred degrees out here now you're going to have an area where it's essentially 50 degrees and balanced out so now you only have 50 degrees right up against your skin trying to trying to cool a hundred rather than zero right up against a hundred, which is going to leave you with fifty. So at this point, at least you're seventy-five. <laughs> with with two, at least you're seventy-five. Essentially, this isn't scientifically perfect. I'm trying to just get the points across. Um, so um, now your human body has ways of warming itself and, and insulating too. Um, this comes from evolution or whatever you want to call it. You know, um, like a mat, look at a duck. You got a duck. Okay, he's got his his feathers or whatever um, smooth smooth back. But when he gets a chill, he 
fluffs up. Now, what that does is that blows up his insulation hugely. Now he's got tons of airspace. And at the same time, by shaking, he radiated heat out. Human beings have the same thing, except we don't have tons of fur and stuff like that to do it. But when we shiver, well, first of all, if you're cold enough to shiver, you want to be shivering because you're not voluntarily moving your body fa fast enough to keep up your, to, to generate a certain amount of heat. So your body, body decides that it's involuntarily going to shiver for you. That's a good thing. Um, so when you're, sh when you're shivering, you're generating heat and you're pushing it out even, you know, so which, so you can, you can think about that and help yourself out. When you curl up in a ball, even if you got big layers on your back, like let's say you got tons of layers, you know, you got, you got your Gore-Tex, you got your insulation, and you got your poly. Well, when you curl up, what happens to the insulation on your back is that it, it, it smushes, smushes. So that now it's pretty flat on your back. And I found that my, the small of my back is really cold, and I, I think that has a lot to do with it. So if you understand the, the premise of insulation, you can just, all you have to do is create a barrier. So put something in there, sticks, tree, you know, bushes, whatever, um, you know, spruce branches, bows, whatever, um, to so that it can't physically collapse all the way when you when you you know when you bend anything back there would help um, because you need an airspace. As soon as you flatten out to nothing, you, it's and it becomes solid. You might as well be bare skin. Not that quite that bad because at least you have a windbreak, but or and you obviously have some kind of insulation because it's not going to collapse down to ever, down to nothing. But uh, you understand what I'm talking about. Um, and as for weight um, maximizing, I think it's best to have like a, a polysynthetic or wool up against your skin. Um, windproof, waterproof, breathable, or ventable um, on the on the outside, uh, and then pretty much uh, like the thickest thing you can get in the inside. Uh, fleece is good, multiple layers of fleece, but it ends up being really heavy um, for for what you get at it. Um, I, I do wear a fleece, but I'm talking about if you're trying to really just minimize it. Um, like let's say that's two layers of a shirt. You're just not getting that much. Say that's you know that's your poly layer or whatever. You know that's just not that much. But you get yourself some nice thick down, and you're gonna get a couple inches out of it. And down is lighter than fleece, so that's the way to maximize it. Um, now. When you're thinking about this in these layers of layers, um, you need to think about not only your, your clothes, but your debris shelter too. It's, you've got your clothes, which are a certain layer. You need the, the ground space built up um, off the snow so that you get that, you know, that, that airspace underneath you, which is really key. Um, then you have the airspace inside the debris shelter, um, the airspace um, of the spruce bows, and then the windproofing on the outside of your structure as well. Um, anything that needs to stay warm. The more layers that you can add, the more windproofing that you, you can add, um, the better. And trying to keep the space inside that you have to warm um, down to a minimum it is, is good too. Um, okay, I hope that made sense and that I explained that um, well enough. I didn't really plan that out or anything. So that's insulation. Have a good one.